Today, we will be covering the emotional drivers behind Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. Now for each individual, exactly how they do Graves' disease and hyperthyroidism and the triggers for those conditions will be different. And even though Graves' disease and hyperthyroidism often emerges in adulthood, we almost always will find the primary drivers in the past. Remember, our body is not against us. Our body is for us. If your body has an ailment, pain, or disease, it serves us to listen to it and to find out what it has to say. Welcome back to the Mind Change Podcast. I'm your host, Heather McKean. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, download, all those things because it really helps us to continue to create all of this great content for you and others. And it also lets us know if we're meeting the needs of our community. So thyroid hormones control how the body uses energy. Hyperthyroidism, which people also refer to as an overactive thyroid, occurs when the thyroid gland produces more thyroid hormone than the body needs. Graves' disease is recognized as an autoimmune disease. In this case, the immune system produces an antibody called thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin, or TSI. This antibody acts similarly to thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, which the pituitary gland produces. TSH communicates with the thyroid and tells it how much thyroid hormone to produce. In Graves' disease, TSI causes the thyroid to overproduce thyroid hormone, which can affect how the body uses energy. From a mind change perspective, the body has often been trying to communicate for some time, but due to the inability to read that language or possibly through denial, the messages have gone undealt with. So what begins as an overactive thyroid eventually turns into an autoimmune condition. And this is very common with other autoimmune issues as well. So first I'll cover general drivers behind hyperthyroidism, and then I'll get into some of the unique drivers that go behind Graves' disease. So there's a significant overlap in drivers behind hypo and hyperthyroidism. You could have two people exposed to the same circumstances, and one person might do hyperthyroidism while the other does hypothyroidism. In general, thyroid disorders are linked to an inability to safely regulate emotions as a child. Now, this is likely because you had parents who had difficulty regulating their own emotions in a healthy way, and that makes a lot of sense because I don't know about you, but I know uh, my parents and even their parents weren't exactly skilled or schooled in how to safely have and process emotions. As a matter of fact, most of their generations were taught to either stuff or deny emotions altogether. Now, the fact that the thyroid gland is located in the throat area is of no coincidence. There's a lot of connection with feeling unable to speak up or to effectively communicate your needs. So the fact that it's around the, the place where our voice comes from is a metaphoric way for the body to be expressing this felt need. So for hypothyroid, there's often a feeling of being overly responsible for the feelings of everyone around you. In hyperthyroidism, there's a pronounced feeling of being victimized and an overwhelming urge to self-protect or overprotect. In general, with thyroid conditions, there tends to be a sense of being unloved or unheard or misunderstood. Safety and boundaries may not have been prioritized in the developmental years. 
Also, this idea that people who were supposed to love and support you became the perceived or very real threats in your life. This would cause someone to become insulated and self-reliant as a coping mechanism. Oftentimes, for people with thyroid issues, communication with loved ones is difficult. You can often feel attacked and, again, misunderstood. You may feel like in your family of origin or in your system that you were someone who had to take the majority of the blame for the things that went wrong. Um, either within your life or within even the lives of the members of your family. There's also a deep relationship with scarcity and lack. Now this can be lack of love, lack of support, nurturing, or even basic resources like food or clothing or housing. And this constant relationship with lack eventually puts our thyroid out of whack. Because remember, the thyroid dictates energy, uh, our relationship with energy. And so what we're putting our energy into, if we're constantly finding deprivation and lack, is going to be like too much, too little, too much, too little. And so that eventually trains our thyroid to respond in kind. For hyperthyroidism particularly, there's more of a feeling of that powerlessness and victimization. And this can cause a belief that you need to work or perform for your worth or value. You believe that power comes from being heard or recognized or respected. So you tend toward overperformance or overfunctioning to gain that approval that you seek. Now, of course, when you are overfunctioning, then and our thyroid is over-functioning, again, that's affecting our relationship to energy. So when the body is over-functioning and over-producing and over-stimulating itself with all of this energy, well, that often leads to feeling overwhelmed, both mentally and physically. Now, if these particular patterns and programs go on unaddressed, maybe even for years, they eventually can become autoimmune in nature. And that leads, that leads us to the Graves' disease. So some of the unique drivers with Graves' disease is the perception that you are always being watched, judged, or criticized. You feel that at any moment, even from the people that you trust and love most, you could be verbally attacked and then abandoned. You feel that you often get the short end of the stick, that life is unfair for you and unevenly stacked for other people. You perceive a great deal of injustice in your life and in your surroundings. Now, when that is perceived in your own life, it tends to alter the filters that we use to see the world. So oftentimes we'll see a great deal of injustice and unfairness and pain and lack in the world around us. And that just goes to reinforce the way we feel about ourselves. Um, often also in Graves' disease, uh, these people tend to only speak up after they become very angry. And anger, anger, which is a very healthy emotion when we're feeling certain things, if, it's wait, if, if you wait for it to come out until you've boiled up to the top, and you use anger as an eventual boundary rather than some of the more healthy boundaries, then unfortunately, the people around you get this explosion of anger or these sometimes inorder inordinate amounts of passion or um, rage. And people tend to then hear only the way something is said, so the anger and the rage and the bitterness versus what is being expressed through it. And so then what that does is it just reinforces that belief that you're not heard, you're not important, and you're not understood, especially from the people closest to you. Now to counteract that belief, you'll tend to be very creative in finding ways to be inspiring or inspired yourself or to inspire others. So that sometimes leads to uh, like a performance type of program. 
So you feel the need to perform, to serve, to pour yourself out. But often this is being done from a place of lack, remember? So you're pouring from an empty cup through profound amounts of energy. And this couples itself with a, a major deep fear of being unlovable and abandoned. And what happens there when these things are triggered, this unlovable, abandoned kind of thing and belief system, then that will often lead to compulsive caretaking of others. When underneath, you feel desperately uncared for or unnurtured yourself, but all of the overproduction of energy is going to serve and help and perform for others. So over time, this creates even more anger and more resentment that they, that you will have, that you're constantly in this relationship of having to earn other people's love, even though you're doing so much for them, it feels like they're not really doing much to reciprocate or much in return. So when this goes on for a long period of time, what happens as a coping mechanism is oftentimes there becomes like this anxious rigidity. And the way that that happens in our body is that we're constantly on guard. And that on guard kind of hypervigilance is done so that we have an, uh, an even more acute awareness of our surroundings. So the reason that we do that is we're looking for you know, people who are trying to take advantage of us, who are trying to take more from us than we're willing to give. Remember, that's our filter, that's our experience. So we become hypervigilant in looking for that. Now, hypervigilance inside of the mind and body takes an enormous amount of energy and output. And it also, remember we talked earlier about boundaries. This often becomes the only sort or form of boundaries that you have. So rest and letting down your guard seems counterintuitive because you would think that opens you up to being vulnerable. Being vulnerable leaves you open up to more attack. So it seems safer to stay hypervigilant even though it is requiring an enormous amount of output and energy. So all of this perceived abuse and attack leads to feeling defensive. This makes you hard to communicate with. It may be hard to hear what others have to say because you project judgment or criticism and therefore what you hear all gets filtered through this lens of judgment or criticism. This makes you harder to get close to and will lead to people pulling away from you. And all that does is validate your belief that you are not lovable and that people will eventually abandon you. So as you see, it becomes a vicious cycle. Now the eventual illness and symptomology that accompanies grave disease often becomes a way to get away from all the perceived injustice and abuse in the world. So this is what we would call a secondary gain. This is the thing that we're getting from the disease, the way that it's serving us. Because when you're ill, it is a lot easier to say no and to not feel like you need to hyper perform. So the illness allows you to speak up about your limitations and what you can handle. So in a very real way, the disease is supporting you and loving you by protecting you from having to overperform. Of course, this is all decided subconsciously, so it isn't as if you're aware of this while you're doing it. But again, it takes an enormous amount of emotional and physical energy to have an overactive thyroid. When those energies are released because the trauma cycles have been properly processed and integrated, that eventually gives you an incredible resource to draw from to create something new. In fact, creativity is a hallmark of healing from this condition. Many people find that when the trauma patterns are resolved, they have much more energy to dedicate to things that bring them true joy and fulfillment. People who do graves tend to be very creative individuals. When that skill isn't being used to create ways to stay aligned with abuse, neglect, and pain and abandonment, then it leaves room for creativity to find its voice in other healthier ways. The way out of this condition, as with most instances of disease in the body, is by going in. 
inside the mind, inside the experiences and the subconscious programming that helps us develop these conditions. What we are going to do is go after those initial received or perceived messages from parents, caregivers, or society that communicated a lack of foundational support and safety. When we can rewrite and rewire those messages, then we can input something different there. In the end, our goal, as always, is to put the power back where it belongs, back in you. This means that you will be the biggest support for you. I look forward to seeing you every other week to dive into this fascinating topic. Please continue to make sure and leave those five-star reviews and comment on a disease, symptom, or ailment that you would like to hear covered. And remember, if you sign up for the podcast newsletter, you can get 10% off of private sessions with one of our Mind Change practitioners. Check out the details on mindchange.com slash podcast. Until next time, thanks for joining us on the Mind Change podcast, where we are changing the world one mind at a time.